Warning! Caffeinated Conquest features adult nerds using adult language. Seriously, don't say we didn't warn you. Dude, if this was a werewolf, I would have totally delverized it. <laughs> Can you delverize a werewolf? Yeah. Uh, it doesn't. You don't actually go up in generation or anything, but werewolf blood is super potent, so you get multiple blood points for each point taken from it. Hmm. I think it's like three for one or something. Can we take any of its gifts? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You're an abomination. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, unfortunately, this is just a regular old run-of-the-mill street person that Xavier decided to victimize. Hey man, I didn't want to take people who were enjoying their time with their families. This man had nothing. <laughs> he had a warm <laughs> He had a hobo fire. <laughs> <laughs> now that hobo fire goes unattended, it's gonna die without him. <laughs> you think I'm you a monster? <laughs> <laughs> the pirate cash thinks you're a monster. <laughs> Who does Byer Cash think is a monster? <laughs> Other than Fierro. <laughs> For obvious reasons. Honestly, he probably doesn't think Murphy Fierro is a monster. He just finds him to be a nuisance. There you go. It's okay, Bob. Yeah, we broke the masquerade once or twice. <laughs> Maybe three times. You didn't, you, didn't even, you didn't just break the masquerade, Bob. You broke the litany. We don't know how you did that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, you sort of drag this street person back over. You hand him to the wounded vampire, who will greedily lap him up along with his two very, very hungry compatriots. And they do sort of piece themselves to a sort of like semblance of health. Now, you said you wanted to ask them more questions as this was going on. Oh yeah. Uh... Why are they coming here kind of thing? What, what, what is bringing them to the Anarchs over here in L.A.? What brings you to the Anarchs in L.A.? I, I bet it's the same thing, hermano. <clears throat> I'm like, my sire hates me. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Mine wasn't too pleased of me either. Funny how it pisses them off when you don't act like the little robot they expect, huh? Yeah, very much so. <laughs> <laughs> Murphy got his sire killed. No, he is a sire. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's only fair that she completes the cycle. Carbonated apple juice. <laughs> it's amazing how you're the only player I ever had to actually embrace somebody, and you've never actually made a thin blood. What do you mean? Uh, 14th and 15th gen. You've always had enough generation to spit them out just <laughs> under the wire. <laughs> Way to go, Genghis Khan. <laughs> I guess it's time we take these men to where we're supposed to take them, but I'd like to stop at a payphone on the way there. Sure. Oh man, we could cheese that system. If I sire someone and then one of you guys diabolize them, you guys would go up a generation. What generation are you? Lead hacks. You're at eight. I could go up in generation. <laughs> but would you allow that? So we're going to take the next month off. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go underground? Or are you guys going to turn me in? So we're going to take the next month off. 
Uh, okay, so you're gonna stop at a payphone. What are you gonna do when you at the payphone? I'm gonna call him and tell him what happened. We'll come back to you. Uh, so Murphy Fierro, you've got your. Oh, you you went back to McNeil's mansion. Yes. Um, you know what you're gonna do with your knife? Yeah, like, like did I did I hear about the conversation that they had about like like um, Murphy um, going to the place to get him ex- executed or? <laughs> to get him executed. Yeah. They, so never said that gonna exp- they never said that explicitly, but we all pretty much assume. Yeah. I'm going to say sure, why not? Cool. I'm going to go park over in that little, in that, I guess in that parking lot, like across the street from that area to... Across the street from the art gallery? Yeah, from that area to... to sure, what's that? across the street from the art gallery? Uh, the bank. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, like, oh, I, I need to go to that place. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Turns his car around in the parking lot. But alas, none of Adam's disciplines are, are meant for bank robbing. Or... <laughs> <laughs> now, now, check it out. He's supposed to be brought there the following night. Okay. Night. <laughs> <laughs> like, following night <laughs> till then. Oh, the sunrise. Wait. Like, oh. following night? Huh? Following night? Yeah, I have to take you on Sunday. Sunday, Saturday. Oh, thank Jeebus. <laughs> so was I got a day to live. <laughs> I mean, you probably just gotta sleep through most of it. <laughs> Depends on how far we stretch this. So, then uh, I shall uh, um, make my way to McNeil's because he's the only one that has like contact with everybody. Kind of, he knows where they're at. Okay, it's you're the, gonna go to McNeil's. It's yeah, Quest Hub. Damn, not having cell phones. <laughs> I told you, carry your pigeons. <laughs> but they only go from like you know anywhere to one place. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you should set one up at McNeil's house. So uh, as, as you arrive at McNeil's house, you can see Murphy Fierro and Betty Riverdale just getting in. They seem to be holding a box or something, and you could swear you could see movement inside it, but you're not quite sure what it is. I asked this Murphy. Do Betty's Murphy just kind can? of looking at the ground with this very worn, very guilty look on her face. I hope she makes it. <laughs> we need to see how low she can go. No. How, how far can Murphy drag her down? <laughs> I would love to see her interactions with with Bert Bankator. Bankator is coming soon <laughs> to a World of Darkness campaign near you. I hope not. <laughs> Why do you hate Bob's character so much? Look at all the mirth and love he brings to the table. And this is coming directly from the people, person whose campaign he ruins on a regular basis. <laughs> But I'm disgusting. <laughs> you just blow up a house? That's <laughs> Only the viewers think so. <laughs> That's what I shoot for. No, Burbank Couture was disgusting. That's it was yeah. Oh my god, you people don't even know about his Wayang. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. That thing's disgusting. Anyway, so yeah, you arrive and you see Murphy sort of coming out. I ain't just probably doing Murphy stuff. I'll just walk up to him. Hey, hey, buddy. Hey, what's up? What, what's up, man? How's your night going? It going good. Show my little pocket watch. Man. I got I got some resources now. I got some money finally. Got some money. Hey, moving up in this world. Yeah. Well, yeah. Speaking of which, I wanted to show you something. You want to come with me? Since <laughs> 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 you're a wanted man, it seems. You want to become more wanted? <laughs> Do I want to become more wanted? I don't know. I, I, I seem to have or, or, or maybe less wanted. Disturb the hornet's nest. I mean, you already kicked it. What are you gonna do? Piss and shit in it? <laughs> no, he already did that. I should go on a Set on fire. <laughs> you already shot down my Allahu Akbar plan. So you know, calm your tits. Yeah, at this point, you might as well just go on like late night news television television show and just eat the eat the the news anchor right in front of everybody. <laughs> No. The old Banksy bitch. Is a real. The <laughs> <laughs> Banksy oh, bitch. Would be Banksy. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awful. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you made some money, eh? Yeah. You trying to make more money, you say? Yeah, I'm trying to make more money. Well, legal activities. Yeah, that's the thing you're good at. A little bit of the nose candy, some of the. That's what we were gonna do. You didn't actually have any fucking heroin. Whatever. Magic oh, heroin. Magic heroin? Ah. Uh, where's fucking. 
Headshot. Max? Let's see, Max was at uh, the Scotsman's residence, so he's probably back at his theater. Oh, alright, whatever. <laughs> I guess magic heroin, you're right. We somehow skip that. Whatever. Alright. I don't know if I want to get in any trouble until tomorrow passes. I think some crazy shit's about to happen. Was it actually Max's responsibility to get him? Uh, no, it was Max's responsibility to make sure you two didn't fuck up. That's right. Both of you individually fucked up. Max is gone. <laughs> <laughs> it is no longer Max's responsibility. For all no, we know, he may be dead. It doesn't fucking matter. You want a fucking gerbil with some heroin? <laughs> Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I don't, I don't need no, no more Murphy in me. I'm good. I even got some with booze. <laughs> they taste like vodka and cherry. You want heroin gerbil? You want booze gerbil? You want Kool-Aid gerbil? I got Pepsi gerbil. Pepsi gerbil? <laughs> no, he definitely does Coke gerbil. He just squeezes it. <laughs> I'll, I'll take a booze gerbil with that. A, a booze gerbil? Yeah. You got a nice Chianti? <laughs> Here you go, we only got one flavor. Really <laughs> shitty vodka. <laughs> I'll hand you a gerbil. Oh, then it's... Oh, that, oh I forgot. Um, it's gonna be a squeal, a squeal like a pain. <laughs> <laughs> and your gerbil army begins. <laughs> Alright, whatever. You should take the feeder bottle as a fetter. Uh, I'll, I'll go to the... Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna need to get some shisha gerbils. Is there is there some butler here that takes messages from the phone? I think we agreed that uh, he didn't have a butler. Although he might. Does anyone take messages here? I'm sure somebody got it. Sure. Was this is butler the is guy? Is McNeil here? Room? Oh, that was a security guard. Oh, okay. okay. So yeah, well, we'll say one of the security guards. All right. A... <laughs> He's crippled. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, please, sir, don't touch me. I'm probably going to have to give him <laughs> servants in the future. <laughs> All right, uh, just wondering if any messages came in from, me from any of the other chips. Uh, so you sort of approach the guy at the toll booth and the, at the front of the, the residence. Uh, no, sir, mister, was it uh, Fierro. spaghetti? Fierro? Yeah, you can call me spaghetti. Fierro, Fierro spaghetti? Oh, fuck it up. Well, which one is it, sir? It is Murphy Fierro. You can refer to me as spaghetti. Why, why would I do that? Do you think you're better than me? <laughs> a long time. Uh, uh, no, sir. Uh, no messages have come for you. Why, thank you for letting me know. Let's go, Betty! <laughs> at this point, so you arrive at your phone booth. And whom do you call? I am calling Mr. Jeremy McNeil. Okay. So you call at McNeil's residence. and He's not meeting with... Uh, uh, what's his name? Yes, he, he is. So when you call, you get a woman's voice on the phone. Oh, Hello, uh, Fortier Residence. What's her name? I didn't know who she is. Catherine Dubois. Uh, hello, Miss Dubois. How is my little project going with you, Miss Anderson? I'm sorry, what did you ask her to do again? I'm telling you, I completely brained on the last session. Oh, yeah, Anderson is just sort of getting the... The ghoul rundown from uh, Miss Dubois. She is uh, adjusting. It is, uh, what is word, very large adjustment. Many, many things that she took for granted must now learn is wrong, yes? Many, many things come to light in the darkness. Ha, huh, that was good. I'll write that down. <laughs> well, I have an urgent message for both Mr. McNeil and Mr. Fortier. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I believe they agreed to meet at a restaurant from what Mr. Fortier uh, said before he left. I can attempt to contact him at the restaurant for you. Is there a number he can reach you at? No, I'm at a payphone now. He is best. Relaying any messages back to the McNeil residence. The McNeil, but uh, Mr. McNeil, is, he is not home either. Oh, just to the servants. Mm. No, wait. I ask her if she can just tell me where the restaurant is. <laughs> you drive up and there's an orange stand. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you go up and you find the restaurant, and next you see a bar, and on the right next to that you see a pet store that was recently broken. <laughs> uh, 
We, uh, one moment, and she will sort of... She will give you the, the address to a sort of newly built French restaurant somewhere on the, the west side of L.A. Oh, boy. Because I figure you did convince uh, 48 to meet with uh, McNeil, so he probably would have taken him to a French restaurant. Now, had McNeil done it... I fully expect he would have taken him somewhere to troll him. <laughs> like a pizza place or something, but... Yeah, so it's a... Uh... I don't speak any fucking French. So, yeah, it's some French restaurant that... It's name you can't pronounce. Omelette du fromage. <laughs> <laughs> Omelette du... Yes. <laughs> okay. I am ready to drive to drop these young anarchs off and then go to the restaurant. I don't know if my companions wish to come with me. How much, how much room do you have? Somebody riding in the trunk. It's a big trunk. Multiple people are going to be riding the trunk because I'm also <laughs> I'm also there. Man, it's got at least five seats. One of the anarchs. Oh, she's taking up two. Two of the anarchs are going to have to go in the trunk. I'm just like, yeah, you don't need to breathe. <laughs> Is there for the kind of the thing too? The little thing on the back of the cars? What do you mean? Like, like the little thing that like to appear like stuck in the trunk? No, like, no, this is the 40s. They don't have that? They <laughs> no. don't have that? Yeah. So, <laughs> just take a part. Don't forget about when you This is arrive. before we considered whether people get kidnapped in the cars before we bought them. Yeah. yeah. Have them ride on the underside. <laughs> <laughs> Blue. All right. Yeah, we can do that. Two, two of the animals gonna have to go to the trunk. Okay. <laughs> they won't. Uh, roll manipulation, empathy. Like, how, okay, how do you want to convince them? Like, hey, you're going to the trunk, bro. Just be like, they're like, I know you've been through a lot, but you're from Mexico, so you know. You're <laughs> from Mexico. We don't want any ch random checks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that would have been racist if I wasn't sitting at a table full of, you know, <laughs> hey, people of Hispanic descent. I love you guys. <laughs> what do you, want what do you mean, you guys? Manipulation empathy? <laughs> it depends on how you want to convince them to, you know, ride ultimate bitch. <clears throat> there may be more Toreador out here. Perhaps the two that have run off. Difficulty four. So, it is in at least two of your best interest to go lay low in the pack. <laughs> I would have, if you asked, I would have threatened them. <laughs> That was my other thing. They were like, no, we're not going in the back. We're just... <laughs> hey, you're going to have to fight him for the seat. <laughs> <laughs> Difficulty four, you say? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five successes. They fight amongst themselves for the <laughs> trunk. <laughs> okay, we're... Does, does the... What was it, four successes? Yes, five. Does the five successes convince the third guy to try to fit in there, too? <laughs> <laughs> That's an epic success, sure. <laughs> I get more leg room. <laughs> I'm assuming Byer Cash is just sitting in the middle of the back seat with his legs spread. Yeah, you, you guys basically just fit all three of the, all three of the uh, people of non-majority descent in the trunk. All of us. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Byer Cash is technically racially ambiguous. Yes, so. I think he's an elf. His people are from. Was it Iceland? That's where mm -hmm. a lot of people believe in elves. Uh, Scandinavian. Yeah. I'm part elf, part part vampire, part demon. It's it's confusing. <laughs> so you get to the last round, and you see. My grandma's look out of place everywhere it goes. <laughs> I want to see you explain how why they're in the trunk to someone. <laughs> <laughs> because Byer Cash needs light room. <laughs> so, so what do you do as you, you pull into the tiny little parking lot of the last round with... I guess they're technically not illegal immigrants, but they're not registered either. <laughs> the three Anarchs in the back? I just sort of go to put the key in, unlock it, just sort of and wave them out. Some, some like, biker-looking dude in leather is just, like, staring and watching as you... as you clown car these guys out of the trunk. Looking for financial advice, friend? He walked up. 
<laughs> you open and they like like one plops out. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> oh, they do have a rise. Need more blood. Make more room. They do one of them so they need more room. <laughs> Truly, he would rather be Diabolized than have to sit in the back seat with fire cash. <laughs> <laughs> Final death is less scary. So as you enter uh, the last round, wooden tables basically from wall to wall. Place, again, smells like whiskey and piss. You immediately meet the scathing glare of Nain Rodriguez. A young anarch neonate that was embraced in the depression, <laughs> which you caused. Yes. And uh, he is very much working class. He is very much man of the people so much. And he's never quite liked the, uh, the fat cat image that you throw around. Not that he's ever been outwardly hostile towards you for it. He just has made his distaste known. Rodriguez, <coughs> a fine night to you. Good evening, big wig. You bring the package. I point to the three men. I'm afraid there was a bit of a complication. Complication? What the hell happened? He says, looking over. Them. Some Toreador saw fit to beat them to near final death. That's bullshit. Indeed, it is. Uh, have you told McNeil? I am going to inform him. Tell him it's been taken care of. Don't tell them that. We hate them. <laughs> the issue has been resolved for now, but I'm afraid things will only get worse. I indeed do intend to go find McNeil tonight in the form of, of what's happened. Alright, fine. You go do that. I'll take care of them and try to get them cleaned up. You're not so bad, big boy. Thank you. Did you just walk away going, she doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking ruined your life. <laughs> I just shake his hand with a smug smile. Yeah, as soon as you know that he learns the truth, you're going to lose all your affection points with him. <laughs> he sort of gives you the 1940s equivalent of a fist bump. I just, just slap hands or something. Yeah. High fives. <laughs> There's this brand new thing called the high five. <laughs> just thumbs up. Well, with it, if it's him, it's the high nines. <laughs> just... He just tucks it in one finger. <laughs> and I'm sorry to, to you guys to, for staying on this so long, but this is the sort of salient moment. Yeah. So I'm just going to skip ahead a little bit so you actually get to... Um, somebody come up with two French words. Omelette? Oh, no, I kind of got... Uh, Le baguette du... <laughs> Fremage. <laughs> the French baguette restaurant. <laughs> Parisian baguette, yes. Because, you know, we, we pissed off Irish people enough times. Let's, let's fuck with the French. <laughs> we should try to hit There are allies right now. <laughs> the white flag. <laughs> <laughs> the flag, the flag. The Leblanc. So, the three of you enter uh, this very fine, well-to-do French restaurant, and the the host up front, very well-dressed in a very fine tuxedo, sort of looks you over, and this gaunt, uh, scared expression comes over his face as he looks you up and down the clothes you're wearing and goes, oh, hell no. What is Byrick Ash wearing? I feel like you might have a sense of style. Yeah. What do you What do you have on? Well, I always have to wear a long, a long overcoat just to cover myself and a large hat. But I wear, like, formal wear underneath that. You're like Frederick under his armor? Yes. <laughs> and I assume you have a suit? Yes. Are you still wearing your, like, I love New York t-shirt? Uh, <laughs> I bought you a suit, didn't I? Yeah. I probably have a cravat. <laughs> Classic. And I have nice things. Soon. Soon I'll get that sweet, sweet oil money. <laughs> so, yeah, well, what are you actively wearing to the restaurant now? Uh, whatever the hell he got me last time. We went to a 
Taylor? Yeah, right. I took him to a tailor. As, okay. As, I'm like, my new friend. I hear you were an Asimite. Let me buy you some clothes. I would rather have you on my side than against it. Okay, then never mind. He's <laughs> totally ready, willing, and able to kiss your ass. <laughs> I mean, there's probably a bit of fear there. <laughs> he hasn't whipped out guns yet. He's like seven okay. feet tall. <laughs> so, uh... And gaunt and glowing in the moonlight. Uh, so he says... Uh, welcome, welcome, sirs, to the Parisian baguette, three of you. <laughs> we will only be here momentarily. We're here to speak to a guest. I see. Uh, anyone in particular? Uh, Mr. Fortier. Ah, yes, the VIP. Um, I'm afraid Mr. Fortier gave me specific instructions that he is not to be disturbed tonight. I could perhaps take a message. He has three seconds. <laughs> One. God. Just start counting up. Do you make any sort of motion or anything? Or like a, a exchange of expression across your face? Start, just start at three. <laughs> start at three and count down. He, he's just like, uh, what's he gonna do? No, I would give him a warning. <laughs> hmm. That's your one. <laughs> That's your one. <laughs> the warning shot there. <laughs> A warning shot to the kneecap. <laughs> he wouldn't be dead. <laughs> you, you, you tell him, it's like, I have to tell you, right now, things are a little tight as far as metal goes, so I can't afford you a warning shot. <laughs> <laughs> I will give you five seconds to take us to Fortier before I make your life miserable. One. Five seconds for what, sir? Two. Roll, uh, let's call this manipulation intimidation. Four. <laughs> Anarchy! <laughs> they see Murphy, you're rolling in the car. <laughs> <laughs> I just fucking crashed through the front. <laughs> hey! I thought you were looking at. <laughs> I thought you were holding the wheel! <laughs> that was your blood, thank you. Two successes. Uh, I see. Perhaps. I reach inside my coat. <laughs> he, he he sort of nods and says, uh, "Yes, I do think we could uh, work something out." <laughs> I start pulling out my gun. Nah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great if you just pulled out like a bottle of wine, just threw it on his tuxedo. <laughs> like, Your night has been ruined. <laughs> <laughs> So what, what do you do as he starts like... Oh, like does he have a, a stereotypical French mustache? Yes. He looks almost exactly oh, like oh, Alfred oh. Pennyworth. What? <laughs> Grab one of the little twirly mustaches and pull it off. All right, I'll do it. <laughs> that sounds fun. He, he pulled out uh, tweezers. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call this dexterity brawl. Oh boy, I'm good at that. Let's see. The buttholes tighten. <laughs> That's a lot of tens. Four. Four. Uh, okay. So yeah, you you firmly grip the side of the mustache, and roll strength, I guess. Hey, <laughs> like damage! <laughs> I like to think you just pull like half the mustache off, like a, like a piece of Velcro. <laughs> <sighs> Awful, but this it's bleeding. <laughs> this man had it coming. You don't say no to, to buy her cash. <laughs> uh, three successes. Three successes. So you basically just grab a clump of hair and rip, and you can see like layers of skin and shit pull off with it. And he just oh oh oh, and as he starts yelling, and and at this point I pull out my gun and put it in his face. Every well before you can even do that, every head in the restaurant just sort of turns towards you, and he sort of backs away from his little podium. Clutching his mouth, they like, sort of like slumping down in the corner. <laughs> like, put, oh, put, put it back. Uh, I'm sorry, I thought you had a dead creature attached to your face. Let <laughs> me <laughs> uh, put it back on. They put all of the you know, bro. <laughs> it's probably like a full chunk of his lip actually missing and bleeding in your hand. I'm gonna dominate and just say silence. Uh, he will sort of still like shaking with pain shooting through his face. Could you kindly, without saying anything, just point us in the direction of the room Mr. Forty is in? Thank you. He points to the very back of the restaurant. That's a good gentleman. All right. I believe Mr. Byer Cash has made his point. 
How's your blood pool looking, Byrocash? Full. I de-alvarized. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> we all did. So you sort of like Aww. make your way through a room full of onlookers as they sort of like mutter and you hear the word ruffians. Do they attack that man? I'm going to use presence. Uh, presence one? Yes. Okay. Ah, I will use quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and I will pull my gun. <laughs> Ah oh, yes, Byrick's Ash signature discipline. He has none. <laughs> well, my guns have presence. <laughs> what the they turn heads all the time. Uh, Charisma. I think uh, awe just makes them like you. Ah, that's the I second think I have to gun. See how many First one, shock. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, wish I could be there. <laughs> you can do, quietest, you like... you do presence. I can, you know. Chemistry? Chemistry okay. fucking Ava Maria while he just blows everyone's head off. <laughs> We're the best coolers. <laughs> this one would be my first master shooting. <laughs> <laughs> Him and Shuri telling Those, uh, that. So this is all, right? Presence yes. one? All right. Uh, charisma plus performance diff seven. The number of successes rolled determine how many people are affected as noted on the chart below. Someone to accuse me of being a ruffian? Four successes. Four okay. successes. So about 20 people nearest you. Everybody, everybody, please return to your meals. What Convince him that he attacked us. <laughs> there was a bit of a dispute, but you don't have to worry about that now. Order from the top shelf if you'd like. Well, you could have just bribed the guy with 20 bucks and avoided all this, but sure, <laughs> buy wine for the entire restaurant. Uh, so, those uh, those that you have cowed with your presence do seem significantly happy. Like, yeah, what, what a stand-up guy. There's no way he could have done anything bad over there. I'm sure it was entirely that fucking waiter's fault. And everyone else is like, I don't know, but he's buying us wine. <laughs> <laughs> the man wanted 20 bucks? Fuck that guy. <laughs> I, I asked him to take us there. He said no. I gave him a warning. He still wanted money. I ripped off his mustache. <laughs> I still have it, in fact. You just put it in, like, your waistcoat pocket. <laughs> right on your character sheet. <laughs> a chunk of mustache. <laughs> Half of a French mustache. Hey, it, it, you use it to disguise Pepe Warhol. <laughs> it actually subtracts from my resources. <laughs> Eventually, uh, you follow the way he was pointing... And the entire section of the restaurant is completely shut down, except for one table at the center, at which you can see uh, Louis Fortier and Jeremy McNeil speaking in hushed tones. Very serious expressions on their faces, not altogether hostile. Uh, there's definitely some sort of communication going on. They, whether or not they're being receptive to one another, you can't really tell. Are we coming into like a doorway or something? Yeah, like essentially. Open, one of those open doorways. Yeah. Just sort of open doorways into the section. Just knock on the sill. Uh, they start, they look almost immediately, and McNeil narrows his eyes and goes, Zantz, didn't I give you a job tonight? Yeah, completed, but a bit of a complication. Ugh. All right. How with it then, boy? Well, we found the three men, beaten nearly to final death. Had to offer them some of our own blood to bring them back up to moving. It appears that they were attacked by three of the Prince's Toreador. The Prince's Toreador? How do you know this? Well, <laughs> I recognize them from Elysium. Some of the sycophants usually hanging around them. Well, what, what happened? Why, why, why were they attacked? Because they felt like it. I, I, I don't understand. Well, I talked to the three men after we revived them, gave them some of our blood, and they told us that they were trying to figure their way around once they arrived in the city, and that some of the Toreador tricked them into going beneath the pier where they beat them to near death. Final death. They, it took quite a bit of blood to get them back up. Like a whole homeless man. <laughs> <laughs> you say that behind me. <laughs> the, the Toreador just attacked them for no reason? Absolutely. I'm completely unprovoked because I quote, well, I won't quote, but far too vile language that I like to use. Several racial slurs were directed at them and me when I had to beat them off. Racial slurs? Yes. 
It, it was purely racially motivated, almost. Something about diluting the blood pool. And you, you can see, uh, Louie looks visibly, not necessarily worried, but deeply concerned. Like, no, no, this is wrong. And McNeil will say almost as much. That's a clear violation. The prince has to do something about this. He probably won't. You know what? You know what? Just just so they can't say that those fucking anarchs are the ones stirring up the trouble. Just so they can't say that those fucking anarchs are the ones that won't, don't follow the rules. I'm going to give them a chance to try. I'm going to let him try. I'm going to talk to that fucking little Spaniard. And we're going to see him actually stand up for the people in his domain. He's going to do something about this. Mark my fucking words. And he turns to 48. He <laughs> says, where's the prince tonight? And Louis eyes, uh, Mr. McNeil, uh, you must understand, uh, where's the prince? And Louis sort of glances at you guys and uh, leans forward, whispers something in McNeil's ear, and he says, Can I hear him? Mm. <laughs> uh, I will give you uh, perception, alertness, versus... Louis still. You going to use aspects? I don't have aspects. Oh. Could I use aspects? Uh, you would have to, You could have enough time to activate it. I'm going to ask you for the same roll, but your difficulty is reduced by two, so you're rolling fours. I Which I needed. Oh, boy. One... Two, three, four, five. I had two. I didn't get any tens, unfortunately. Well, Louie Do, Louie has no fucking. Uh, <laughs> Louie has no fucking stealth whatsoever. <laughs> a lot of dodge, though. A lot of dodge. <laughs> As a French man would. firearms, <laughs> Oh yeah. I was just like, why does he have dodge? All right, we're playing different. Well, Louis got two. Defender wins. Uh, no. I mean, you you take this running away. How did you do? Two as well. I'm gonna have his successes cancel out your guys, so you don't actually get anything. Uh, I will give you three words. Uh, suck my. <laughs> suck my Scottish. No. You hear the words restaurant, Rosa, and España. Yes, of course. The red Spanish restaurant. Or the pink. <laughs> the pink the pink Spain restaurant. Uh, at which point McNeil sort of gathers up the, uh, the napkin in his chest, throws it down on the table. Uh, your friend's all right, Zanz. Needs to get the stick out of his ass. And just starts, walks and storms out of the building. He just walked the check. <laughs> it's all right, this was uh, my treat. <laughs> and you see there's like a half-eaten fucking, well, I guess it wouldn't be eaten at all, there's two lobsters there. <laughs> Do they, do they cook lobsters in France? I don't know what French food is. There's two fucking baguettes on it. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Some snails. French onion soup. Ah. Uh -huh. Fondue. Escargot. Frog legs. Escargot. Filet mignon. Okay, I get it. I'm an uncultured swine. <laughs> Just think of everything that has a stupid word in it. <laughs> don't you have a French last name? I do. That's how bad it is. <laughs> I, have, I have a French last name, but I'm completely Italian, as far as my mother says. So wait, I should know. Baguettes! <laughs> our, our, our chief meal of the day. It's, uh, they each got half a baguette. A partially smoked cigarette and a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> cafe. <laughs> 
So I'm here the little cups too. That's that's Italian. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Double C's and make the chest sound or Italian. Oh, come on. Macchiato. All right, so we're gonna go back to you guys for now. So. Nah. I guess you're some rocket before your final days. So what are you thinking? Like, um, you wanna head to the the art gallery and see, steal some paintings, and maybe have a uh, uh, good friend uh, Magazan sell them, maybe. <laughs> but, well, I'm pretty sure if we ask Mark, he'd be willing to give us something that we'd need. What are you looking for money for, boss? Uh, I, I, I need, well, I'm trying to improve my... <laughs> I'm so poor. <laughs> I'm trying to improve my apartment. The, the, the windows are cracking it during the day. <laughs> You're trying to improve your resource points, I see. Yeah. <sighs> it's a strange way to put it, but yeah. yeah. Well, like, what, are, what are these points you speak of? <laughs> nah, that's all right. You try, you try to move up a little bit more in your, you know, your I'm trying, situation. I'm, trying, I'm trying to be a real Giovanni, you know what I mean? I, I, I get you. you. I'm on the, the broke side of, of things right now. Well, I don't know where our buddies are. I don't know if we should wait here until they show up. Perhaps we can help you all out as a group, unless you, you, you think this is a two-man job. It's, a, it's an Italian job. We, we have, we have. <laughs> oh, just for that, you're my new buddy. I've called name Spaghetti. Remember it. <laughs> what are you going to give him for his code name? Oh, I, I don't know. Meatball? <laughs> Meatball. <laughs> yeah. Tuesdays on NBC. Ladies, you keep this box of gerbils. Make sure they don't fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> you have a fucking container of booze in there for them. That's not good. You can't do anything about that in terms of making sure they don't die. Stop it, don't die. <laughs> no, no, no. If they stop puking too much, just take the bottle out. <laughs> All right, what, 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 what we need to do is uh, also, Betty, make sure if Mark or any of the other guys come by, you, you, you fucking let him know where we went. Where'd you go? You're just gonna leave me here. I don't know this fucking guy. I'm supposed to stay in his house? This is a nice guy. Don't you worry. No, no, I'm coming with you. Are you fucking kidding? I don't think there are nice guys with fangs, Murphy. <laughs> you, you don't? I, I promise you these are the nicer guys. <laughs> Look, if you want to come along, I'll level with you. We're probably going to do some illegal shit. And you're going to need a cool code name. <laughs> Marinara. <laughs> I was just gonna go with pasta sauce. <laughs> pasta sauce. Spaghetti meatball marinara. <laughs> Little linguini. <laughs> uh, that's what you call your penis. <laughs> I, call, I call her basil. Okay, whatever. It doesn't fucking matter. Are I'm not sure? saying I like this. And we've already done illegal shit tonight, Fierro. Don't act like don't act like this is the first time for me. Hey, sip down another fucking gerbil and calm yourself down. <laughs> Sure, like twist his neck. That's a good gerbil. Now you keep a couple of those in your pocket. <laughs> Come along. <laughs> Bring one for me too. <laughs> they're just screwing it around in the pocket. <laughs> no, they're drunk. <laughs> they don't move a lot. They're just kind of like passed out in the pocket. I look forward to when McNeil comes home and. Opens a box and sees drunk gerbils. <laughs> I will leave a note on top that just says drunk gerbils. <laughs> Signed spaghetti. <laughs> All right. From anyone else, that'd be ridiculous. <laughs> P.S. Jabril, please install carrier pigeons. <laughs> you write that on a gerbil. <laughs> <laughs> just tie it to its leg. I don't know. <laughs> the point is. I'm going to help you out. Uh, I'm not sure where this is going to lead us, but, you know, live life like today was your last day or night. Whatever. Let's go get fucked up. <laughs> what a I feel like that's a common theme with you. <laughs> what a motivational speaker. What did you think that, Betty? Fifteen years on the force, you couldn't tell how strong the fuck out I was? <laughs> These glasses are too goddamn dark. <laughs> I don't know. I have to ask the guy in the evidence locker. Well, you don't know shit. 
Actually, he might know shit because I am terrible at covering my tracks. <laughs> In any case, all right. Uh, do you have a car? I do have a car. Well, I think I can get up a little. What bit do you mean? First. Do I have? Oh, you're asking him. Yeah, because I don't have a fucking car. <laughs> my cars are. It's, it's, yeah, I don't have fucking cars. You have a bad thing with cars? You have a bad thing with cars? It's in the. Blown up. It's in the harpies. Burn. In the harpies mansion. Yeah. Yeah. Harpies. It's in the front of the harpy mansion in ashes. All right, whatever. Yeah. All right. I'll fucking help you. Start cranking my car up to go. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you guys actually going to do? Are you like, are you gonna rob a bank? No, the, we're gonna rob an art gallery. Yeah, the, I, th- I, th- I think of the, the one that he's going to like tomorrow. To... Do you want to rob the Elysium market? Are you Aww. kidding me? Uh, 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 <laughs> or we can do another one? No, I mean, I could show up as... Oh. <laughs> just don't one. totally do that. Just... <laughs> I did uh, take this subterfuge. Like, right now we have a chance of getting out of this, but just burn that bridge. <laughs> <laughs> well, we sold, the, we sold the pennies back to them for... <laughs> Profit. This looks familiar. I like the idea. <laughs> Apparently we're going to go steal art because we feel like defacing and... Pissing off more people. I feel like we're gonna get fucked in the ass. <laughs> but right in the butt damn it, Adam! <laughs> if, if I don't want to help you in your plight, it's the tell thing to do. Tell us thing to do, right here. All right, meatball, lead the way. <laughs> All right, so you guys are going to the fucking art gallery. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, no Russian. Okay. Uh, in which case, I come back to you guys. Well, uh, I feel like we should follow McNeil, because he's probably going to say something that might upset the prince. And I like that guy. I don't want him to get murdered. McNeil or the prince? McNeil. <laughs> I would like for the, the prince, prince to get prince, the, the prince can burn in hell. I don't know. You believe in that? Eh, it's like three days. <laughs> <laughs> three days enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not exactly sure where he went. Fired. Would you happen to know where our dear Scottish friend went off to? I do not. Uh, do you have any clues? With your. <laughs> <laughs> I do not have elf ears. No. I can't use racial slurs. <laughs> no. I take away your ability to do that. <laughs> Denying their existence to begin with. <laughs> I guess we're gonna sort of step outside the restaurant. Be like, well, I suppose if any inevitable carnage that would come in this situation, we will not likely be able to see it. Does that motivate Byrick at all? <laughs> the more fancy one mentioned a restaurant the word Rosa and Espana while trying to you're more urbane um I feel like you don't have much to do with the nightlife and he just got here but uh you would know that there is a restaurant called uh, La Rosa de Espana Hmm. and uh that was somewhat centralized in LA Mm mhm so how very far from us? Uh, it's probably maybe a 20 minute drive. Will do. Should we be on our way? I believe I know the restaurant we should be heading to. Oh, thanks a lot. We should also probably have any weapons ready. <laughs> Locked and loaded. <laughs> That's also the names of them. <laughs> do you have different pairs of guns with different... <laughs> you have locked and loaded. You have shock and awe. <laughs> Mercy and forgiveness. <laughs> Spick and span. <laughs> <laughs> you only use one of those, though. <laughs> span. <laughs> to clean up. All right. So you guys begin driving to the restaurant. As you're, about to, you're about to get on the freeway. I need a dexterity drive roll from you as somebody attempts to throw themselves in front of your car. 
Well, hope you enjoyed another session of our Rise of the Free States Chronicle for Vampire the Masquerade. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. We, of course, have plenty of vampire videos. We also play D&D, &D, and we also have our original content where we show you how you shouldn't be playing these games, which is unfortunately usually how we end up playing them. <laughs> we have plenty of social media pages you can follow and see all sorts of funny and dumb stuff. Our storyteller, DM Chaz, over here is a fiction writer. He has a Kindle page. If you wish to support us financially, you can always buy some of his literature. We always try to bring you the, the best content that specialty, a box of specialty hot sauces and some cheap black fabric can bring you. Of course, stay caffeinated. Ha <laughs> ha